Hello Lana, how are you doing today? I hope you had a nice week and you are doing well. You have tuned in so that we can learn together. Welcome to our program of Knowledge Quest on Hope Channel Kenya. Um, I'm your teacher Peterson Maranga and I'm joining you once again so that we can learn physics. So welcome to uh, today's discussion. Our lesson is going to be uh, from four topic. Our subject is physics. So. Welcome and join me as we introduce this new topic. Our topic for today is mains electricity. Uh, so welcome so that we can discuss about electricity. And uh, in, our for, uh, in our high school uh, curriculum, this is the last topic in current electricity. And uh, it comes along with it, uh, the things which happen and the consumption of the electricity in our houses. Um, current electricity was introduced to you while you were in Form 1 and there the topic is called uh, cells and simple circuits. In Form 1 we talked about the sources of electricity and uh, in particular we talked about the primary and the secondary sources. We looked at a few of the advantages of each one of them and uh, how uh, electricity can be obtained. So in Form 1 Elect uh, current was defined as uh, the rate of flow of charge, that is the quantity of charge flowing through a conductor for a given duration of time. Uh, and then uh, that was built on much later uh, in Form 3. Uh, in Form 2 we talked about uh, the magnetic effect of an electric current because in Form 1 now we have an introduction, in Form 2 we have um, the magnetic effect of an electric current, that when a current flows through a conductor it has an associated magnetic effect with it. And so in Form 3, uh, we had uh, more topics of current electricity. Uh, there was um, uh, current electricity too, and there was the heating effect of an electric current. So um, in Form 4, we talked about uh, the electromagnetic induction, uh, where we uh, see how uh, the electricity uh, is generated using the generators. Usually what happens there uh, is that uh, when a conductor is moved inside a magnetic field or a magnetic field is moved and there is a conductor uh, in that field, uh, there is um, electromagnetic induction, there is an induced EMF and so on. it causes a current uh, to flow. So now we look at uh, mains electricity. We have the current uh, which is generated uh, by or through electromagnetic induction. Uh, of course, uh, at the power stations, this current is fed into the transmission cables, it gets into our houses and so we make use of it. So in um, mains electricity in Form 4, what we ideally look at is the, uh, how the power is transmitted uh, from the power plants to the consumer, from the generation, the power generating plants uh, to the uh, particular appliance we are using in our houses. Uh, and so uh, let us just go to the introduction part of it and we start our topic by looking at um, uh, the sources of mains electricity. Now um, mains electricity usually comes uh, from, uh, it is generated at the power stations, uh, so that is what we can say, that is where it comes from. Of course in Form 1 we talked about the different sources of electricity. Uh, for example when we talk about uh, the primary sources, we had those, those sources which could be uh, used again and again and so we had uh, uh, the types of sources which could be recharged and so we had secondary sources. Uh, primary sources um, uh, am among their disadvantages is that they cannot be reused. Once they are used that is it. So uh, mains electricity uh, commonly come from um, power stations so it is generated at the power stations. Uh, and how is it generated at the power stations? Uh, we say uh, that um, an alternating current uh, is generated at the power stations uh, when large conductors are rotated inside magnetic fields. And so the concept there um, at the power stations or the generating plants is called electromagnetic induction. And uh, so we had electromagnetic induction as a topic and as at now, by the time we get here, we should be understanding of uh, 
electromagnetic induction. But maybe to remind you, uh, we said there in that topic we learned that when a conductor is moved inside a magnetic field or uh, a magnetic field is moved uh, relative to a conductor, there is an induced um, EMF, there is an induced potential difference inside that conductor and that induced EMF causes um, a current to flow through the conductor and so because of that we have electromagnetic induction. So the mains electricity comes from the uh, power stations where an alternating current is um, generated at those plants and the alter alternating current comes when um, large conductors are made to, rot uh, made to rotate inside the magnetic field. So we have very large magnets uh, having very strong magnetic fields and so a conductor is caused to move inside that field in the process there is an induced EMF. Now uh, there is a reason why we talk of uh, an AC or the alternating current in the mains electricity and we say that uh, in the mains electricity the power generated at the power plants is an alternating current so we are going to commonly be referring to it as AC. So when we talk about AC of AC in this topic we are referring to alternating current. So an AC is preferred because it can easily be stepped up or stepped down. Uh, again in um, electromagnetic induction there is a discussion on the uh, types of the uh, transformers that we have. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the process of transmission the power is always stepped up or down uh, depending on where at what point we are in the transmission. So it is only the alternating current which can easily be stepped up. Stepping up means increasing the voltage and stepping down means uh, lowering the voltage. So there is a reason why we prefer or an AC is preferred to direct current. It is because it can easily be stepped up or stepped down. Um, when the potential difference is stepped up, the current is stepped down. And when the potential difference is st stepped down, the current is increased. And so um, the AC is preferred because it can easily be stepped up or stepped down. Now, uh, the source of the energy uh, to rotate the conductor varies from one power plant to another. There are those power plants which um, uh, make use of uh, energy from the wind. There are those which make uh, use of energy from moving water. There are those which make use of energy from uh, steam. Uh, we talk of the geishas from deep down the earth. So we have different sources of energy which can be used to rotate the conductor. You see, we are saying that um, the AC current which is fed into the transmission grids is generated at the power plants. And during the uh, generation, uh, during the uh, generation of the AC, what happens is that the conduct, uh, large conductors are made to rotate or to move inside magnetic fields and in the process we have an induced EMF. So here we are saying uh, that the source of the energy used to rotate that conductor uh, varies. So examples in Kenya where we have a generation of the mains electricity, we have hydroelectric power stations. Hydro means water and so hydroelectric power stations make use of moving water. And an example of a power plant which makes use of uh, moving water in Kenya is the Masinga uh, power plant, which is uh, sit situated on uh, Masinga Dam. Um, so we have hydroelectric power stations which make use of the potential energy of water. So when the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, what happens is that uh, uh, the kinetic energy is used to rotate those conductors and in the process we have electromagnetic induction taking place. Another example of uh, uh, another source we have is the geothermal power stations and in Kenya we have one example which is found in um, Olkaria uh, generating plant. Olkaria is found uh, in Ivasha so we have geothermal power stations. We also have uh, windmill power stations. Um, in Kenya we have another exam an example and uh, these are found in uh, Ngong Hills uh, in Kajiado uh, County. And then we have uh, nuclear power stations. Uh, at the moment we do not have one in Kenya, but uh, plans are underway. Probably in the near future we are going to have the nuclear power stations. So these are the examples of the sources where we can get the mains electricity from. 
um, uh, by the end of the day, whether we are using the hydroelectric power stations or the geothermal or the windmill or the nuclear power stations, we're going to have large conductors made to rotate uh, inside magnetic fields and uh, there'll be an induced EMF. So that whatever is fed into the transmission system will be an AC. Uh, so we, uh, we have that. So that is what we call the sources of the mains electricity and they keep uh, varying. Um, once we do the generation at the power stations, uh, something el uh, else happens. You know, when the generation takes place at the power plant, the idea is the mains is going to be um, used by a consumer who is located some distance away from the power plant. Uh, for example, uh, w once we have the generation taking place um, at Olkaria, uh, the consumer of the electricity is not only the people around Olkaria. We have people far away as far as Nairobi, we have people in Akuru, we have people in other places in Kenya. So after the generation, uh, we talk about uh, the transmission. So the power needs to be transmitted. It has to be uh, transferred from the power plant to the, where the consumer is found. So in power transmission, uh, we are talking about the transfer of the electrical energy from the power station to the consumer. Consumers can be our homes, uh, can be our schools, the hospitals around us. Uh, shops and any other place where the electricity is going to be used. So uh, in power transmission, uh, the focus is on the movement of the or the transfer of electricity from the power plant to where the consumer is. So what happens is during the transmission, um, the power from the generating plant um, is fed into a national grid. And the national grid is the uh, power transmission system in a country. Um, we have um, the different generating plants. For example, we have one in Ngong, which makes use of the windmills. We have, a, we have another one in Masinga Dam, which makes use of the moving water. We have uh, Olkari and uh, many more. So what happens after the generation, all those um, power plants are interlinked, meaning they are joined to the same uh, connection uh, grid, and the grid make, uh, makes the transmission of the electricity from the power plant to where the consumer is. So the national grid links all the power generating stations the transmission circuits and the substations in a given country. Um, uh, for example, what we have in Ngong is connected to what we generate from Olkaria and what we generate from there is connected to what we generate from uh, uh, Masinga Dam. So all of them put together, they form a national grid. So when we talk about a national grid system, we are referring to an uh, interconnection between all the power stations within a given country, the transmission circuits and also the substations. Reason why we uh, have the inter interconnection or the link is is that uh, suppose there is a uh, supposing there's a problem with one of the generating plants, then the consumers are not necessarily disadvantaged. They can make use of the power coming from the other uh, power plants within the same country. So the national grid ensures that there is a constant power supply, so that if there is a problem with one plant, uh, still there will be a connection. There will be power. Uh, in the grid system available um, for the consumers in the different places. Um, uh, in the grid system, we have power transmitted in the form of three-phase alternating current, uh, a three-phase alternating current, and uh, this is something that we should have understood when we uh, were discussing about the uh, electromagnetic induction. So we have power generated in three phases. It is fed into the grid system, and that power is in the form of the alternating current. Remember we mentioned that the alternating current is preferred because it can easily be uh, stepped up or stepping down. Stepping up is necessary because it minimizes power losses in the process of transmission. Uh, usually when, when the power moves from the power plant to where the consumer is because of the distances involved, a lot of um, power may be lost in the process of transmission. Uh, but when stepping up uh, occurs in the process, it minimizes what is going to be lost in the process of transmission. And so we, uh, we talked of having an AC. So um, uh, in the national grid, uh, we have uh, two things we talk about. Uh, we have the grid input. We also have the grid exit. Uh, at the grid input, um, you know, the grid system we have already said is uh, an interlink, an inter interconnection uh, linking all the power plants and um, uh, the, the, the transmission cables and the substations. So what happens, uh, we talk of the grid in input, 
uh, the grid input is usually the generating plant power from the plant itself like um, uh, you go to Olkaria uh, we have a grid input there because we have a generating plant so once the power is generated uh, that power is going to be fed into the national grid system uh, the power plants usually power is generated at around 11 uh, to about 25 kilovolts this is a lot of potential difference this is 11,000 to about uh, 25,000 volts uh, but uh, for the cost of transmission, uh, this power is not high enough. And if it is transferred, if it is transmitted, if it is uh, transmitted at that uh, voltage, a lot of power is going to be lost in the process. And uh, uh, after the power is ca uh, has come from the plant and is fed into the uh, grid system, the power is stepped up to around uh, 400 uh, kilovolts. This is 400,000 volts before uh, it is fed into... Uh, the transmission cables. Um, the stepping up is usually done right after the generation at the power plant and the stepping up is so uh, to reduce or to minimize the power losses in the process of the transmission. Now um, the stepping up minimizes the power losses. The trans um, it is transmitted by overhead cables mounted on metallic poles and these metallic poles are known as the pylons um, and the pylons carry four cables uh, one for each phase, and the fourth one is a neutral cable. Remember, from the previous um, um, uh, slide, we said that the power is transmitted in three phases AC. Uh, there are three phases involved at the generation, uh, and so in the in the in the pylon or on the pylons, we have four cables, and the, and for the four cables, one for each phase, meaning that there are three phases. So each phase carries is carried on its own cable, and the fourth cable is a neutral cable. Um, usually, on the grid system, the overhead cables we see on the pylons are made of uh, aluminium uh, because uh, aluminium is usually less dense than copper. We use aluminium because it's a very good electrical conductor, uh, meaning that it has very uh, low resistance and so current can easily flow through. And in the process of transmission, if the resistance is kept low, then uh, the power loss will be minimized. And so we're saying that on the pylons uh, we have four cables and these four cables are made of aluminium because aluminium, number one, is a very good uh, electrical conductor, conductor and then number two, aluminium is less dense. If it is less dense, it means um, um, uh, it's going to give us easier work during installation. So there are two reasons why we use aluminium or it is used for the overhead cables. Number one, it's a very good electrical conductor Number two, it is less dense. Uh, of course, at some other point, we are going to use copper. Copper is a very good uh, electrical conductor also. So that is what we have for the grid input. So the grid input is what is coming from the power plant. Uh, once the power is generated at the plant, it is stepped up. And in the process of stepping up, the current is reduced. And the current flowing through the um, transmission cables being minimum, reduces uh, the heat dissipation in the process of uh, uh, the power transmission. Uh, after the power comes into the grid system uh, through the input, on the other side now we shall have another point we call the grid exit. Uh, remember, now the grid input is going to comprise of the pylons uh, made of the four cables, one cable for each phase, and the fourth one uh, being used for the neutral. Uh, so the power is going to exit uh, through what we call the grid exit. Um, at the local substation, the power is going to be stepped down. Remember, now stepping down means reducing the potential difference. Uh, from the power plant stepping up, the potential difference is increased to around 400 uh, kilovolts, uh, but it's going to be reduced to lower values, and so this happens at the local substation. So the first exit... Uh, is at a local substation where the potential difference is going to be stepped down from 400 uh, kilovolts to voltages that are convenient for domestic consumption. The consumption here can um, be in the form of the heavy industries, the light industries or the domestic use at our homes. So the first uh, exit is the, at the substation where we have the stepping down. Now the substations step down the power to appropriate values depending on the consumer. What we need at home may not be exactly the same as what we need uh, at other places. We have uh, heavy industries. We also have uh, the light industries. So for the heavy industries, 
the power will be stepped up uh, down from the 400 kilovolts in the uh, in the overhead cables on the pylons to around uh, uh, 33 kilovolts to about 132 kilovolts. Uh, this is a lot of potential difference, uh, but but then which is convenient for use in the heavy industries. And so we have the first uh, substation, uh, which is going to reduce the power to around uh, 300 to around 33 to 132 kilovolts for the heavy industries. And then after this first substation, we could we can have another or we have another. Uh, substation which reduces the power from 400 uh, to 11 kilovolts to about uh, 3 kilovolts and this is convenient for light industries. Um, and then we have the final substations which reduce the power from uh, uh, that at 3 kilovolts to uh, about to 40 uh, volts and this is what we can use in our homes, in schools, in the hospitals or in the churches or in any other places where we are going to make use of the mains electricity. Um, this is uh, a representation of the entire uh, power uh, generation and transmission from the power plant to where we have the consumer on the other side. So at the power plant, the power is uh, generated at about 12 kilovolts, 12,000 volts. And so right after the generation, uh, we have the step up. So the power is increased to around uh, 400 uh, kilovolts. And that is what is fed into these uh, pylons. Uh, remember, we have said that the pylons are metallic poles on which we have uh, four overhead cables, one for each phase because the power is generated in three phases, and um, one for the neutral. So we have uh, the power plant, the step-up transformer, the pylons which are carrying are about 400 kilovolts, and then we come to the first substation where the power is reduced from 400 kilovolts to what we are going to use on the other side. So from the first substation, uh, the power comes to the local transformers, the transformers right after or next to our houses or next to the schools, the small transformers you see around us from which the power is drawn to uh, our houses. So uh, this is what we call the power transmission generation and transmission from the power plant to where we have the consumer at our homes, in schools, in the hospitals, in the churches uh, or where we are, we could be making use of um, the electricity at our businesses in the shops or any other place. So um, uh, we have uh, the same representation. We have the power plant. Uh, you can see it there. So after the power plant, we have a step up transformer. So we have the, the first point is A. The second point is B, where we have the step up. Uh, and then we have the pylons, the first uh, transmission substation, which reduces uh, from 400 kilovolts to around 33. So from here we have the overhead cables. Uh, these are very common and familiar uh, to us. And so we have the distribution substation. After this one, we have the local transformers which are found next to our houses or which we, uh, we see uh, in towns and in so many places. So after these transformers, the power is reduced to about 240. And that is what we can make use of. Uh, in our homes. So that is what we uh, have as the generation and the sources of the mains electricity. Um, as at now, then I'll expect you to be uh, having in mind what we call the sources, the different sources that we have mentioned, and uh, the process, you can highlight the process of the power transmission from generation and transmission from the power plant to uh, our homestead uh, for us to uh, make use of. So we're going to have a short break. When we come back, we shall proceed from here and we're going to get more information concerning the uh, power transmission to our houses and the domestic wiring and the consumption and the power losses. Stay tuned, let's meet after the break. Dear Lana, welcome back from the break and we proceed with our discussion. Before we went uh, for the short break, we were talking about uh, the transmission of the mains electricity from the power plant to our homesteads. So we just realized that the power comes from some generating plant somewhere and uh, at, at, at the generating plant, what happens? Power is generated at about uh, 12 kilovolts, uh, which is not 
conducive for long distance transmission because if it is transmitted at that power, uh, there is going to be a lot of power losses. There will be a lot of energy losses in the process of transmission. So after the generation at the, at the plant, the power is increased. It is stepped up, so we, are, we add the step-up transformer, which increases the potential difference from about 12 kilovolts to around 400 kilovolts. Then it is fed into the national grid system, uh, which is comprising of uh, what is labeled here as the tower part C, but then we called it uh, the pylons. Pylons are metal, metallic poles on which we have uh, the overhead cables mounted. Uh, the pylons carry four cables, one for each phase, because the electricity is generated in three phases. We have phase one, phase two, and phase three. So we have one cable for each phase, making it three cables. And then we have the fourth, fourth cap cable, uh, which is the neutral cable. It doesn't have any potential difference. It's at a zero potential. So after the long transmission, we come to the first substation, uh, where the potential difference now is reduced from 400 kilovolts, because 400 kilovolts is um, a huge potential difference we cannot use uh, uh, at home, uh, in the industries, or in, in any other place. So it has to be reduced. Uh, so we have the first uh, substation where the potential difference is reduced from 400 to around um, uh, 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 33 kilovolts. And so uh, this one can be used in the heavy industries. Um, then after that one, we have another substation which reduces from that 3 kilovolts to about 11 kilovolts. This can be used uh, for the light industries. Um, after this substation, what we have are the local transformers, which reduce from 11 kilovolts to about 12, uh, 240, what we can conveniently use at our homes. So finally, the power gets to uh, our homes, and so we can make use of it uh, to light the bulbs. We can use it for uh, the mains electricity, to watch the TVs, uh, to play the radios, or any other use in the house. So um, then it should come to your mind that uh, the bulbs you see at our homes, the bulbs you see at home, the sockets, and any other uh, electrical appliance you see at home, for it to function, it must be having a, a connection all the way to the power plant. So should there be uh, a disconnection anywhere, then the electricity is not going to reach the home, and so we are not going to uh, make use of it. That is what we were discussing before we went for the short break. Uh, and so we have different representations here. We can have different figures showing the same, uh, so that in the examination you can see it differently. We have the power plant or the power station. And remember the power station can be from any of the sources we talked about. It can be uh, made of the windmills, can be made of the geothermal uh, power stations, can be hydroelectric, can be nuclear, can be anything else. So we have the power station. After that one, stepping up. This one must always occur because stepping up reduces the power losses in the process of transmission. So we have these high voltage overhead transmission cables, the step down transformer, the consumer on the other side. Uh, that is still the same thing we have. And so we may not take a lot of time to uh, discuss each one of them. They are only representing the same thing, uh, but slightly uh, differently. But they mean exactly the same. So we have the power station up here. Uh, the, uh, the step up transformer, the pylons, uh, the transmission substation. Now the power is reduced. It is more uh, um, conducive or more convenient for us to use at home. Uh, after the transmission substation, these uh, other ones are called uh, the distribution substations. Um, from the distribution substation, this is where we talk of the commercial industries, the heavy industries and the light industries. And then from there, we have another distribution uh, substation. And then we have the small transformers right after or next to our houses. Uh, so in a nutshell, then, we can summarize the whole thing and say um, electricity is generated at various kinds of power plants uh, by utilities and independent uh, power producers. Uh, this is very important to you as the learner. In Kenya, the power generation uh, is mandated uh, to Kenjen. Uh, so Kenjen does the generation, it produces the electricity. So you go to Olkaria, you realize it is uh, Kenjen doing the production. That's why we're saying that the power generation is mandated uh, to various kinds of power plants by utilities and independent power producers. Once it is generated by Kenjen, it is sold to KPLC. So KPLC does the 
uh, distribution to the consumers. So the, uh, the, 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 the ones responsible for the generation is the Kengen. Then Kengen sells to KPLC, which does the distribution to our homesteads. So uh, we have the generation, the substation for transmission, substation for distribution. So from here we can have the heavy industries, the light industries, and uh, uh, the commercial uh, usage. So we have the, all that in the, in the, in the, in the process. Now, electricity distribution. You know, the, the, the electricity generated at the power plant is ultimately supposed to be used by a consumer. So when you talk about distribution, uh, this is the penultimate process of delivering the electric power to where the consumer is. So uh, in the distribution, it includes the following. We have the medium voltage. Uh, this medium voltage is less than 50 kilovolts uh, power lines. Then it has uh, low voltage, which have... Um, which comprises of less than 1,000 uh, V distribution cables. We have the domestic wiring in our houses. We also have, um, and sometimes we can talk of the electricity meters. The meters will be uh, charging us. It shows us what we have consumed for us to pay uh, the bills at the end of the month or at the end of the uh, given duration. So when you talk of distribution, we are referring to the power now coming from the overhead cables to where we are. Uh, so from the pylons, we have the power reduced to uh, less than 50 kilovolts power lines and then we have the low voltage which are having less than a thousand volts we have the no domestic wiring this are th this is what we have within the house and then we have the electricity meters all this um, uh, is what comprises of the electricity distribution uh, from the overhead cables to where we are going to have the uh, electrical appliance now before we go far we need to realize that the high voltage during the transmission is very dangerous. So dangers of high voltage uh, transmission. The power moving through the overhead cables is about uh, 400 uh, kilovolts. 400,000 volts is a lot of potential difference. What we are using in our houses, which we still consider dangerous if it is misused, is 240. 240. Here we are talking about uh, 400,000 volts. So you realize that if the 240 V we use in our houses is uh, so dangerous in, and it can cause electrocution, then it tells you that the 400 kilovolts is very dangerous. So it has the following dangers. Number one, it can lead to death uh, through electrocution. Then it can cause fires during uh, power upsurge. If the power uh, abruptly increases to very high values, it can cause fire. Uh, and so finally, the re electromagnetic radiations from the power lines uh, elevate the risk of certain types of cancer. And so you realize that along the power transmission uh, grid uh, lines, usually where we have the pylons, uh, people are not allowed to construct uh, premises under those transmission cables. It's because um, uh, the electromagnetic radiations which may result from those power lines may elevate the risk of certain types of cancer. So high uh, voltage transmission may be very dangerous and so uh, just ad we advised not to be uh, staying very close or under the overhead transmission cables having very high uh, voltage uh, voltages in them. Um, with that in mind, now we can talk of the electrical power uh, and energy. You see, we have, we, we have mentioned again, time and again, that in the process of transmission, the power is increased to high values for the sake of the transmission. And we have just said that in the process of transmission, when power is increased, uh, or when voltage is stepped up, there will be less power loss in the process of transmission. So we can uh, calculate the electrical power uh, in the process of the transmission. Uh, one thing we know is that from the, from the work done, uh, is given by the volts times the coulombs, uh, this, whereby this is the potential difference and this is the charge flowing through. So we have work done given by uh, V times Q. V is the potential difference, uh, sometimes we call it the volts, and uh, Q is representing um, the coulombs, the charge flowing. So work done is given by VQ, uh, but the quantity of charge is equal or is given by the current flowing multiplied by the time taken. From the definition of current, current is the rate of flow of charge. 
So current is the charge you divide by the time. That means we can say charge is equal to current times time. So uh, Q is equal to current times time. But current in science is represented by capital letter I. So we say Q is equal to IT. Q is equal to IT. So um, from the work done is equal to VQ. Um, from the work done is equal to VQ. Uh, where there is V, we can, where there is Q, we can put IT because Q is equal to IT. So it gives us that work done is equal to V times I times T. This is how we find uh, the work, the electrical work done or the electrical energy supplied. So the work done is the same as the energy uh, supplied. So uh, the work done is equal to VIT. Sometimes the work done is known as the, uh, the work done is known as the electrical energy. So electrical energy is given by the potential difference times the current times the time taken. So if a current flows for say five minutes and then another current flows for 10 minutes, uh, the work done there must be different because uh, of the different uh, time that we are having. So the more the time, the more the work done, the less the time, the less the work done. Or the more the time, the more the energy supplied, the, more, the less the time, the less the energy supplied. So we end up um, getting that work done is equal to V, the potential difference times the current times the time. But then, doing a substitution for V and I, if we do a substitution for the potential difference at the current, we get the following equations. Remember, uh, from Ohm's law, uh, from Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. Um, Ohm's law states that uh, the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. Um, uh, as long as uh, temperature and, and other physical conditions are kept constant. And so we have V is equal to IR. This is from the Ohm's law, current electricity 2 in form 3. Uh, and so um, if V is equal to IR, we can, we can get I is equal to V, you divide by R. Therefore, this expression, the work done is equal to VIT, uh, can be manipulated and we end up getting V is equal to IR times IT because V is IR. So where there is V in this expression, we can put IR. So the work done is equal to IR times IT, whereby R is the resistance of the conductor. We end up getting that work done is equal to I squared times R times T. Or we can still get that the work done is equal to VT. Uh, but now where there was I, this I in the original expression, I we put V over R. So we get uh, that uh, the work done is equal to VT. Uh, so we maintain the V and the T, but in place of I, we put V over R. We end up getting that VT times V over R is equal to V squared over V squared times T divided by R. So V is the potential difference. I is the time, T is, uh, I is the current, T is the time. Uh, the only thing we have added in the second uh, expression is the knowledge, the, the, the information or the concept of R. R is the resistance of the conductor. So the electrical energy can be calculated using any of the three expressions. Work done will be given by V times I times T, or work done will be given by I squared times R times T, or the work done can be given by V squared times T you divide by R. So that is how we get the electrical uh, energy. But electrical energy is not the same as electrical power. Uh, so we have something else we can mention. From the definition of power, power is the work done you divide by the time taken. So uh, power is the rate of doing work from the definition, which can be expressed mathematically as power is equal to work done you divide by the time. So using the expressions that we have already listed here for the work done, uh, we can get the following expressions. Uh, electrical uh, power is I squared times R times T, then you divide by time. So this T and this T will cancel out. So we cancel the two T's, we remain with I squared R. So electrical power is, you take the square of the current multiplied by the resistance of the conductor. So electrical power is I squared times R. Or the power, using, using, using the last expression, uh, the last expression that we had here, uh, we have the power is equal to V squared uh, T 
divide by R again times T because we are dividing by T. So again the T and the T cancels out. We remain with V squared over R. Or finally we say power is equal to V I T again divided by time the T uh, cancels uh, out. We remain with V I. Uh, so we can get electrical power using the three expressions. Either we take I squared times R um, or we take V squared divided by R you take v times i this um, will depend on the on, on the on the quantities we are given in a given uh, question uh, if we are to choose from the three equations to calculate the electrical power now work done or electrical energy is measured in joules uh, these expressions that we have we have written or listed here the work done uh, when we take the potential difference times the current times the time we get energy and energy is measured in joules as the SI unit. So here we get the work done in joules. This one also gives us the work done in joules, the same as the last one. Uh, but what we have calculated as the power, uh, the electrical power is measured in watts. Watts, the, 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 the symbol for a watt is capital uh, W and that is what we have. Uh, one joule is equal to one watt is equal to one joule per second. So once we do the calculations of the electrical power here, the units for what we have obtained will be uh, the watts. And for the energy, uh, the units for what we obtain is a joule. Um, this will be very important for you uh, as you'll be doing the uh, solving of numerical problems in electrical energy. We just have one example uh, to help us use the electrical the, the, the expressions or the formula we have written. So we have an example here. Um, an electric heater running on a 240V mains has a current of um, 2.5 amperes. So we have an electric heater operating on a 240V main supply when a current flowing is 2.5 amperes. So number one, what is the power rating of the heater? What is its power rating? Two, what is its resistance? What is the resistance of its element? So we have a solution. Uh, for us to answer the first part, we are looking for the power rating. Um, the electrical power is obtained by taking V times I. So power is equal to VI. The potential difference in this question is 240 and the current is 2.5 amperes. So then the power is equal to VI. V is 240 and uh, I is 2.5. So 240 times 2.5 gives us 600 watts. So the power is 600 watts. But then uh, the answer, uh, the way we express the answer, we don't just write the 600 watts. We say that the power rating is 600 watts, comma, 240V. This means uh, that the, the heater uh, uses 240V and it converts 600 uh, watts of um, uh, electrical power. That is, it converts 600 joules of electrical energy uh, into heat uh, and other forms in one second. So the power rating of that heater is 600, uh, 240. 240 is just what is coming from the mains. Um, part B. Uh, using power is equal to V squared you divide by R, our V, uh, our power now is what we have calculated. 600 will be equal to V squared you divide by R. Again, our V is what is coming from the mains. Our V is 240. So it means 600, the power, will be equal to the square of 240 you divide by R. So 240 squared gives us uh, 57,600. Uh, we can rearrange this expression. We get R is equal to 57,600. You divide by 600. Uh, this will give us 96 uh, ohms. So then it